So previously I showed you how I went off and 3D printed this amazing Wolverine helmet in multiple pieces that was created by Yosh Studios and 3D printed those over on the Elegoo Neptune 4 and the Neptune 4 Pro 3D printers that just print incredibly fast. Now today, what I'm gonna be showing you is how I took that from a raw 3D print all the way to a finished wearable replica prop helmet that is just stunning and still retains a lot of those amazing texture details. So when looking at the Wolverine helmet and trying to attach the ears, I can see that when I put them in place, there's a bit of a gap between the helmet and the ears. So what I'm thinking about doing is actually removing those tabs that are gonna help secure it evenly in place and then just welding them together. All right, so I've got two versions of the ears now that I'm working with. One where I've completely sanded off the little nubs there so that it's gonna sit as flush as possible. And what I have on the other side is I'm gonna keep the nubs on there. I've sanded them down ever so slightly and then I'm just gonna try and push these as forcefully as I can in place, along with some 3D glue to secure the ears to the mask before I proceed with trying to fill in those seams. And one thing I'm gonna make sure to do is just give some of the parts a light sanding to give it a little bit of a texture. Since they're so smooth from the 3D printing process, I wanna give it just a little bit of a grit to actually hold on to when it comes to welding these parts together. All right, let's add a little bit of that 3D glue onto this print. If you've never worked with 3D glue before, this stuff works amazing at bonding parts together, especially when they're PLA prints together. All right, I am pretty impressed with what I'm seeing so far. Again, I've got, definitely got those seams that I need to clean up here, but everything is now glooped together. And this is the one side that was sanded completely smooth and it's a much tighter fit than the other side. I still have a little bit of a gap at the bottom and it still isn't perfectly aligned at the top. So I'm gonna have to do my best to again, clean these up along those seam lines, which will try to figure out the best way to do that. And based off of one of your comments, I ran off to my local gaming center and found green stuff. I've never worked with this stuff before, and I figured it would be a really good option since everything I've seen online indicates that it's exactly what this is used for, is filling in some of these larger seams, whether it's miniatures or 3D printed objects like the one that we're working with here. Yeah, and funny enough, it's right here. For conversions and hiding mold lines, it's right on the back of the packaging here. This seems like it's perfect. Let's break off a little bit of this here and start trying to fill in this gap. I mean, it's gonna definitely fill in that gap. I'm just nervous that I'm gonna jack this up. Uh, like apply a thin bead of this and really thin it out and stretch it out into that seam. Man, I can't tell if this is curing already. It seems like it's hardening really quickly. I should have been doing that more like that. I put too much on the sides there. I can already tell. I should have gone really super thin, super thin with this. And before this fully sets, I'm gonna use the end of a paintbrush that's rounded to try and add a little of the, you know, the skin texture that's on this 3D model. Just to give it a little bit of the bumpiness, it'll hopefully help hide that seam and what we've just done here. So I barely used any of the green stuff. This is definitely gonna last me a lot longer than I was anticipating. I thought I was gonna use up like half of it just for this, uh, just for the ears here. Now this might be the messiest looking finish. I'm not too overly concerned. I'm gonna let this sit overnight and completely cure. And then we can look at sanding this a little bit down. Again, I added a little bit more texture to it just to make it so it's not perfectly smooth once I was applying it there. And then I've got a little secret that we're gonna attempt to do to cover this all up. So it's been about 10 to 12 hours since I applied the green stuff here and I'm not sure if it's fully cured or not. I don't know if this stuff fully hardens or, or what. It still feels a little bit malleable and a little bit tacky, but I, I think I'm gonna try and attempt to see if we can sand it smooth-ish a bit. I still like the textured effect that I was able to add in there before we go off and try and get this thing painted, but let's try and smooth it out a little bit more. So while I'm sanding, I'm trying to not completely sand this smooth. I still wanna retain some of that textured look that I indented into the green stuff, just because it's gonna help it transition between the two different parts and hide that seam a little bit better. If it was just completely smooth, you'd definitely see it. Now, after doing some sanding, this definitely looks better. It's not 
perfect by any means, but I am really liking the results of using the green stuff to fill in the seams and would recommend trying that out for yourself on some of your different projects. Now, when it comes to actually painting this, I'm gonna have to tape this whole thing off, which will be a fun project in itself, but to retain the texture there, what I'm gonna be using is Flex Seal. This is a rubber spray paint and it's gonna provide a little bit of a textured finish to this that should mimic this little textured finish that we have on the helmet here and help cover up our little seam area. And it's black, which is perfect for what we're gonna be painting on right here. Now I give it about three coats here with the Flex Seal and I'm gonna let it cure overnight. So the next day I can see that the results aren't looking exactly as I'd hoped. So I think I'm gonna have to give these a few more coats. I can still see the seam lines there. The one side is definitely looking better than the other. Now I really wanna start applying some of the yellow to this helmet. So I busted out a few different acrylic paints and these really cheap makeup brushes that you can find over at the dollar store. I picked up this little tip from 3D printed props and so far they're working pretty good. Now, unfortunately it's kind of looking more green than yellow and I'm trying to do a little bit of a dry brushed effect to this. I don't want a solid coating of yellow because I still wanna retain some of the dark undertones from the black filament. So I'm gonna still proceed with dry brushing a few coats of yellow here. It's looking okay, but still not quite as vibrant yellow as I'm hoping. So one thing that I think would look really cool with this Wolverine mask are some white eyes. So to make those, I'm gonna try and 3D print them. And to do that, I brought the mask file into Nomad Sculpt, brought in a very basic oval shape and subtracted the main helmet from those oval objects there. And I sent it over to my 3D printer, which is the Elegoo Neptune 4 and the Neptune 4 Pro, which by the way, Elegoo is sponsoring this video. They're the makers of these fantastic, fast and affordable, budget friendly 3D printers that can print stupidly fast. These were a quick six minute print for each of those eyepieces. And again, I printed both of the Wolverine cows on these Elegoo 3D printers. If you're interested in more information about them along with their new Rapid PLA that works great with these fast 3D printers, you'll find links to those down below. All right, now fingers crossed these work. The way that I designed them is that they should be able to just be pressed fit into place. They're more for display purposes than actually wearing. You could potentially print these in some transparent filament or use these to create uh, transparent plastic molds, but look at that, pops right into place. Yeah, I definitely can't see out of these, but they look really cool. Plus they hold in place really well also, and I can just pop them back out if I wanna wear them without. I then proceeded to tape these back off and give them yet another coating of that Flex Seal to try and help further conceal the seam lines. Yeah, I did two more coats here, and it's basically a full can across both of these helmets. Now the one looks perfect and it's still retaining the textures very nicely. The other, it's just not looking as seamless as I was really hoping. This one side definitely looks decent from a certain angle. The other side, you can really see it. In hindsight, I probably should have done a much better job smoothing this out. But again, this is sort of a teachable moment and hopefully something that I can share with you guys. If you're gonna be doing this file or something like this, make sure to sand it smooth and then you can apply the flex seal to get that full textured effect there without worrying about the seam line showing. And I want to give the helmet one more pass with some more yellow paint. This time I picked up some Citadel uh, Flash Gets Yellow that looks like a nice vibrant yellow that again I'm going to try and dry brush on here and see if we can make this pop just a little bit more. All right, and check it out. Here is our finished Wolverine helmets. Again, I've got two variations here, both 3D printed. The first one I printed in multiple pieces on the Elegoo Neptune 4 3D printers. And then the second was printed in one piece on the Elegoo Neptune 3 Max. Now, overall, I am really happy with how this project turned out. I'm very happy that I went back over and added a little bit more yellow here to just highlight everything a little bit more and make it pop just a good bit more like we see in the comics, but not being too comical. This seems like it's more of a real life Wolverine cowl that you might see. The Flex Seal as well did a great job of retaining and adding some texture there. Again, I just really wish I would have sanded this a little bit smoother here to help hide those seams just a little bit more. Also, I'm really happy that I went back through and added a little bit more black pigment into the crevices there to help, again, make the yellow in the mask pop. It looks like it's a worn gray 
gritty looking Wolverine cowl, which is the way it should be. Also, the 3D printed eyes just work phenomenally there. I'm so happy with how they turned out. Uh, they just kind of pop in place and hold in, which is just fantastic. I'll be uh, uploading those directly to the Yosh Studios Facebook group. I'll be putting those up on my Patreon as well in case anybody wants those. Uh, just a really simple way to add that eye effect here to the three prints, but you can't exactly see out of it. And speaking of, let's try it on. Ugh, not pinch my ears this time. All right, there we go. Again, I can't see anything while I've got this on because of the eyes, and it's a little hard for me to talk. In reality, I probably should have scaled this up by like, I don't know, 105%, not to the original 100% scale, but it looks fantastic, and I'm really excited with how this turned out. I also want to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support and me making content just like this here on the interwebs. And if you are interested in my 3D printer profile settings that I used for this Wolverine cowl, you can find those over in my Patreon. Now, I wanted to know your input on what else I could do to make these Wolverine cowls stand out and look even more awesome. I'm wondering if I should take one and make it really battle damage. I'm not entirely sure. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Hey, thanks so much for watching all and I'll see you next time.